Good morning. We are joining you live in 2021. Can you really believe we're in 2021? I'm joined by Elder Anthony Miller. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you doing? Oh, man, I'm doing good. Listen, I'm still kind of shell-shocked, still kind of shell-shocked from Wednesday when they just bombarded the Capitol. I saw your cousins in there, man. You know, and it was just, in a, I mean, something we never thought we would see in our lifetime. So right. I have to ask you at the beginning, I mean, uh, uh, everything was shocking, but what was the most shocking thing about the activities on Wednesday that just was like, wow, for you? Probably the most shocking thing was that a group of people who were so convinced that a wall could be effective at deterring people from getting to places that we don't want them to get so easily uh -huh. were able to scale a wall. That's probably the most shocking thing to me, that they disproved their own theory of a wall being an effective border protection uh, for our country. So that was probably the most shocking thing, along with just the fact that <clears throat> it was just people who hated rioting so much right. showed support to it themselves. So those two things are probably the most shocking things to me. Yeah, yeah. That, that's I never thought about the wall thing. That that's rather interesting. Now that I think about yeah, it, I was pretty quick, pretty easily. So you know, good point. Good point. Wow. Yeah. Well, we won't riot today, but we are going to talk about this Sunday school lesson, the lesson six, called to follow. Call to follow. The lesson focuses participate in Jesus's mission. That's simple enough. Participate in Jesus's mission. It'll be coming from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. I'll take the first outline setting out with doubt. And then, Elder Miller, I'll leave you the second one. Is that cool? That'll work. That'll work. Let's jump on in here. Now, Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. And it says, as it came to pass that the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. Jesus is teaching the people. and But the teaching isn't the focus of this lesson, as you know, in verse and verse four, you know, Jesus tells Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon Peter answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. But here are the key words right here. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the Next. So listen, when I read that, I'm telling you, Pastor Miller, when I read that, what really stuck out in my mind, this question, this question, when should our faith, when should our faith be greater than our experience and our expertise? Mm. Because a lot of, you got to think about Simon Peter, he, he, he didn't just start this right. fishing business. Right. He's an expert. Like mm -hmm. he's good, he's experienced, he has expertise, he knows what he's doing. And still, his belief in God, because he called him master. He didn't just say, You teacher. No, he said, Master, like I'm submitting to you now. You said it, even though my experience and my expertise kind of tell me, no, this ain't gonna be anything. I'm gonna take you at your Word and I wonder, Pastor Miller. I have to say, I wonder so many times how many times we talk ourselves out of our blessings mm -hmm. because we aren't willing to follow things that don't seem to make sense. Every Christian, sooner or later, a matter of fact, I can't remember what book I read it in, but it said, If everything you do in your Christian life makes sense, you may not be following Jesus. Wow. And I was like, you know what? That makes sense. And in this outline, it says, nevertheless, at your word, there has to come a time for every believer that your faith in God has to overcome your experience, your expertise, and what people say is common sense. Because if we're really going to walk by faith, sometimes it just ain't going to make sense. But listen, I'm, I'm going to get out your way because I want to hear responding without hesitation Verses 6 through 11. Come on, tell me, what stood out to you, Elder Miller? So the amazing thing in verses 6 through 11 is there, there are a couple of different movements that are really interesting here. Mm -hmm. The first one, um, it says, after they responded to faith, after they followed the word of Jesus to go deeper and let out their nets, um, the scripture says, Luke says, they caught more fish than they had ever caught before. 
Wow. And after catching more fish than they had ever caught before, quickly they recognized that when they did it Jesus's way, what they had mm. was not sufficient enough to be able to handle everything that Jesus had to offer them. Love it. Luke said that they caught so many fish that the boats began to uh, be weighted down and the nets began to break and they had to call another boat over um, to, to basically say, help us catch these fish. So a call to follow, I would suggest, is not simply following the word of Jesus, but it's also a call to share. Hmm. To share, first of all, the blessing that comes along with being a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus gave one boat the word to go out into the deep and to let down their nets. But because they were faithful, they caught mm. enough to fill both boats. That's good. The amazing thing is when we follow Jesus, we never kind of consider sometimes how us being obedient to the word, the way, and the will of Christ can be a blessing to somebody else. Mm. Um, so after this amazing thing happens, we see where uh, uh, Simon begins to fall down on his knees and begin to basically worship Christ and begin to say that he's not worthy and all of that. And Jesus says, basically, if you think that's something, now I'm going to take you from being a man who catches fish to a man who catches men. And mm -hmm. so a call to follow is a call to share, not simply in sharing our blessings, but also sharing Jesus. And so a call to follow is to say, look, Jesus is working in my life. He's giving me gifts. He's giving me abilities. He's giving me the, the talents to be able to do some things. I want to help other people with them. But more than anything else, I want to help people see the same Jesus that is doing things in my life. And wow. so when I, every time I read this text, every time I read this particular story, the thing that always jumps out is how Jesus uses what they were already doing and shows him that he has authority over that to prove to them that if I can make you a better fisherman, wow. after all the experience and years you've had of being a fisherman, imagine what else I can do with you if you would just follow me and follow my word. Wow. And so that's the amazing thing for me is, as we follow Christ, Christ shows us more about ourselves than we would ever realize on our own. Like, I mean, these guys were used to fishing at night. They were used to fishing for certain periods of time and all of that. Jesus broke every single norm and in that broke every fishing record that was known to man to that time. Wow. And that, that all happened because they were willing to follow his will and follow his word. So yeah, a call to follow to me is a call to share not only what Jesus does for us and through us, but also to share the one who is Jesus, who is actually doing the amazing things in us and through us. Wow. Now, I, I got to ask you this question because it came to my mind because I'm thinking about that person. I have a dream. I have a plan. God has put something in my heart, but I just don't know. And I just I just feel like I'm not good enough. Or I just like they're missing that one thing. What would you say to that person to get them to launch their boat into the deep? It, it kind of goes back to something you said. If, if following Jesus always makes sense to us or if, if, if I... Christianity is always making sense, then we may not really be following Jesus, right? And mm -hmm. so the idea of, take, of following Christ is being willing to take a risk, even when the risk seems crazy. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we're waiting for perfect situations, perfect conditions, perfect circumstances. Again, uh, according to fishers in those days, you couldn't catch fish during the day. You catch them at right. night and you caught them in shallow water. But Jesus broke every single norm and they were able to do something that no fishers had done before. And so to that person, I would just say, if you are waiting for your life and your situation to line up to conventional wisdom, then you're probably waiting to do something in your own power. Hmm. But if you're in a place where what you are doing makes no sense to you and you have no choice but to trust in God, now you're in the right place for Jesus to do something amazing and to blow your mind and the mind of everybody around you. Wow. Wow. That's good. Now, listen, that's why we study the word of God. Study to show thyself approved 
because listen, you ain't going to grow. Your faith ain't going to grow. You're not going to hear the voice clearly if you don't stay in the word and follow your church's live stream. Continue to do that. Support your local church ministry. Give. Do youth activities. Don't forget about our children and our youth. Let's make sure we do that because we are all called to follow in various ways, but we're all called to follow. Elder Miller, I'm going to give you the last word. If people forget everything they heard about this lesson, what's the one takeaway that people should take from the lesson called to follow? I think the biggest takeaway is, even if it doesn't make sense, if God is calling you to do it, do it. Both. Because his ways aren't our ways, his thoughts aren't our thoughts. It don't have to make sense to you as long as it makes sense to God. Ooh, if it, do it doesn't have to make sense to you, as long as it makes sense to God. That's that's good teaching. That's good teaching. Make sure you enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.